When you first receive your cosplay file, it will come as a zip that needs to be extracted. Inside the zip you'll see various files and folders. The first set, these, are the files and folders that will be uploaded to your web server that we'll deal with later. Second set is the template and these are all the pads, the imp files that are used by Opus to generate the content that you can configure and customize to suit your own theme. And the last set, which we'll be dealing with now, is the database, which we'll set up on your web server. So, I've already logged into my web server and it's loaded up the control panel application. Yours may appear differently or it may be using a different piece of software, but the basics are probably the same. So the first thing we need to do is load the MySQL database application which is here and running and we need to create a database so I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it Courseplay and create the database database created okay what we now need to do is we now need to create a user for that database now you may already have users set up and you may have an administrative user set up and I would advise against not using that but creating a new user specifically for the course play database with its own password so I'm going to call this CP user I'm going to use the password generator to make sure it's a nice strong password and I'll copy it and I will store it off screen ready for later use password okay. create a user all done go back and the last step of this is to allocate that user to the course play database. So again, I don't want to use the admin user. I'm going to use the interactive CP user. And I'm going to allocate it to the interactive one course play database. Add. It'll ask me what rights I want to use. I'm going to select all of them. Make changes. Okay, so we now have a database called this, which we need to remember for later. We have a user and we have set the rights. So we go back to the control panel. The next application we need to look at is called PHP My Admin, which I've loaded here. So what I now need to do is I'll need to e import the database configuration file into my new database. I'm just refreshing it so it will bring up that database over here, which it still hasn't done, it hasn't quite created it yet. Okay, let's close it and try and reload it. Okay, here's our database, Interactive One Course Play. So I'll click on that to select it. It tells me that this is the database that's selected and you need to make sure that it is selected or the import will fail or try and import it into a different database if you have more than one on your web server. So let's go to Import. I'm going to pick the database file that we looked at earlier, which is this one here. and I'm going to execute the SQL. It tells me it's successful and if I go to the structure I can see that it's loaded all the different tables. Some of these tables are already populated with some information that we need to use Courseplay initially such as user levels etc etc. The next step in configuring Courseplay is to put our new settings in the login PHP file so that it runs on our server. So let's go back to our courseplay files and this is the file that we'll need to edit login.php. It will need to be opened in either something like Notepad or in a specific code editor. We have it set up for Notepad 
and as you can see there are various PHP variables that need to be configured with the information you received when you set up your database. First of all the DHB host is localhost. The DHB user was interact1 underscore cp user. DB password I copied and saved off screen was that and the DB name is interact1 underscore course play and I need to save that file and that's our configuration file ready to use with our web server and course play database close that the next step is to upload all of these files to the course play folder on your server you'll either need to do this via your control panel or I'm going to use an FTP client called WinSCP but any FTP client will do I've created a folder called CoursePlay on my web server and my local directory shows all the different folders and files that are available and remember we are going to use just these for the upload the other two need to stay off-site off your web server so I'm going to drag and drop those into the CoursePlay folder and it's going to take a little while to upload so I will leave that for a moment once you've uploaded all the files or your FTP transfer is finished everything you need to run course play will be on your web server before we actually run the registration of course play we'll have a quick look at a couple of folders and files to give you a better understanding of how course play works the first thing to note is that I've set up a subdomain called courseplay.interactive.co.uk that points to the course play folder here when we enter that URL it'll load a file called index.php this is a simple redirect file that will point to one of two paths depending on the state of course play the first state would be unregistered so it will run the start pad and this will allow you to activate course play and create the initial admin user the second state is that course play is already registered and ready to go and this will run the default pad and this is basically the login screen that you and all your users will see before getting access to any of the other pads in this folder so let's load Firefox and register course play our URL was courseplay.interactive.co.uk and you'll see that the URL gets automatically redirected to the start pad which is this one and this allows us to register course play the first field contains the default pad and this is the one for the login if that's not the correct address then you'll need to change it we then need to give a valid email address and this is going to be used later to send you your password for the initial admin account the email address is valid and I'm now going to click the register course play button it's generated a serial created and saved the site configuration file the site configuration file if we refresh our FTP folder has been generated and you'll also see that we lost this file but gained this file and it contains your serial number stroke key for the database and also some other information such as that default pad and that default email address 
it also contains the packages directly where your uploads for your SCORM will be saved and you can change this if you know what you're doing. So let's go back to here and we now need to create an admin account so that you can get access to course play and I'm just going to use the name John Smith create the account it's creating the user won't take a moment and once it's done it will send you a password and it will give you the link to the login pad so the user has been added tells me it's sent the admin password to this address and it's given me the ability to load the login pad as you'll see when I click it that's where it's gone and it's now loaded the login screen that you and all your users will see when you need to log into course play to use the login screen you'll need your username and password which has been emailed to you and looks like ours has arrived the email will come from the course play team unless you change that configuration.php file so I will load that email and it says dear John so my username is admin this is my password there's the default pad so I'm going to copy that and it was admin paste the password and we can log in it's verifying it and we're in and as you can see the URL has changed again and this time it's actually loaded the admin pad by default because I'm an admin user if I was just a standard user it would use the standard courses pad or if I'd specified a specific pad to load for a user it would load that pad but we'll look at that in more detail later it tells me that I'm logged in and that I have the ability to log out and it tells me what type of user I'm logged in as and then it gives me various buttons for all the options that I have as an admin on this pad. This is an Opus imp file so you can go in you can change the buttons you can change the theme as long as you don't change the scripts for what these things do you can basically configure it to suit your own site. But for now that's all and we'll log out and we're back to the login screen ready for the next user.